Living Waters presents On the Box. It's Friday! <laughs> what does that mean? It means it's not Thursday <laughs> and tomorrow's Saturday. It's Friday. Yeah, it's Saturday tomorrow. I'm excited about Saturday. Why? Tomorrow. I know why, but why? Huntington Beach. Yeah. Open air. I wasn't oh, there last the Saturday. supposed to be beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. So you want to tell us all about your top secret mission? Uh, no. Nope. Okay, good. Can't, really. <laughs> no, I know. I just wanted to. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. You may see the results sometime in the future. God uh, willing. I'm heading to the mall tonight. Very excited. We're going to do the evangelism table at the mall. Oh, very I'm cool. Taking a couple of big stone tablets. Do you have these? What is this, Ray? This is the, the new choker. Try it on. <laughs> oh my, oh wait, are you are you are you insinuating that my neck is that small? I'm sure sound would still make that it. That is like a heavy-duty, sturdy. Yeah. What are these called? Um, tracking devices. For yeah. Probationers. <laughs> anyway, 180 movie. It's uh, it is a good size one. It's up and running. And they're available. Yeah, they're available. Store. How much? I have no idea. How much, Daniel? A dollar. A dollar! Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's very thick and sturdy, and if you use it as part of a slingshot, you will kill frogs and squirrels. <laughs> Don't tell Scotty. Oh, that's right. A squirrel. Dude, how's a squirrel died? It went to heaven. <gasps> the squirrel died? Yeah, he was very upset. The squirrel died? Yeah. So anyway. Oh, that's too bad. It was doing better. <laughs> yeah, it was very sad. Um, the card? Yeah. Um, Alan Atsby, uh, who works for our ministry, thought of this. Got the idea. It's got the 1 800, sorry, the 180 movie uh, address on one side, the card. On the back, it's got the Paris and Springburn, the Once in a Lifetime. And then you open it up and it's got a gospel, full gospel track, and then a little blurb about 180 there. So it's a, a great track that we'll have probably in about three weeks. About a, a month. month. About a month. So uh, I think it'll be five cents each on gloss, gloss paper. So I'm very excited about this. Pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Mark, you going out tonight? Yes, I am. Um, don't know if I'm going to the glass house or to uh, uh, the block down at Orange, but uh, yeah, we plan on going out. The weather seems to be fine enough, and we're going to have a good time. Cool. Excellent. All right, let's get started, because there's much we want to do today mm -hmm. in anticipation of tomorrow. I am so looking forward to going out and preaching tomorrow. I really missed hunting, even though I was at uh, Hollywood. and uh, Where were you uh, last Saturday? You don't know about that? You were away. I was with I was the away. Salvation Army. Oh, that's right. That was all. Yes, and we preached on your street. stomping ground, and I was concerned no one would show up, and we had a good crowd. Did you? Uh, oh, yes. You never get a good crowd there. Yeah. Oh, well, I had the two dummies there. Um, you know, my. I take dummies friends. with me. I call them my team, but. Oh, he used to. Love my team. Especially <laughs> but, yeah, since we, it's mainly my daughter. We've so. we got a good crowd, and uh, people up on the, on the heckler's box, and then I thought we we're going to have a bad time at, uh, at Hollywood, but it turned they out great. They let you put someone on a box on the promenade? Yes. Really? Yes, yes. Because the Salvation Army had a permit to film. Ah, you're so smart. So if you have $850 <laughs> to spare for a filming permit. I don't. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, cool. yeah, it was good. Yeah, we had a very good time. Okay, we're getting a thumbs up from Danny. <laughs> and what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. He didn't want me to say that, apparently. Bunker Cam! Yes, I don't care. Bunker camp. There they are. Says? Wow, look at that. They they look really bad. Look at the fleas on the wall. They, I know. Look What's at wrong that. with Daniel? What is wrong with Daniel? <laughs> There's something wrong with the camera. There's something wrong with the camera, or there is radioactivity on that's your wall, fleas. man. That is that's bad. Bad crop that of fleas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so let's uh, move on to less than adultery, shall we? Yes. This is from Chris. Uh, I watch your show every day. I love it. I just have a question. When Ray witnesses to people, he always quotes Jesus saying, if you look at a woman in lust, you have committed adultery in your heart. Does that only apply to married people? Or can it also apply if you're both single? I know lust is a sin regardless, but I was just wondering if it is the same as adultery in all cases. Thanks and God bless. Yeah, the clue is whosoever looks at a woman to lust after her. So that right. means everybody. And and, and some people say, oh, uh, adultery just means a married woman. But the Bible says, whoever looks at a woman to lust after, whoever it is, commits adultery in the heart in God's eyes. So if Jesus said it, I believe it, his word, it cannot lie. If it's written in the Bible, I'll believe it till I die. Though the mountains be removed and cast into the sea, God's word will last forever throughout eternity. Amen. That's an old song I didn't sing. It's just the words. Oh, very good. Yeah. Mark? No, I mean, Ray hit it. It's not if you look, as this person quotes, it's whosoever looks. Anyone who looks upon a woman, and that would include you, whoever's watching. Uh, so if you are a whosoever, 
well, then you are guilty, uh, more than likely, of looking at a person. But there's also good news, because whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I, I have a little bit of concern for Chris, who, who uh, emailed us. I don't want to read too much into it. Uh, but uh, questions often have uh, presuppositions behind them and, and meaning and reasons as to why they're being asked. Um, well, what did you read into this? I didn't well, read into I wonder into it. if uh, Chris uh, has a girlfriend and is having issues. Hmm. He loves our show. Yeah, but I mean, you could have issues and love the show. I mean, we, <laughs> we prove that every day. Yeah, right? but I would stay away from the show if I had a girlfriend and I was into things I shouldn't be doing. But it okay. may be well, the case. I, I, could be, I could be completely wrong. But yeah. And if I am about Chris, that's great. But if you're someone who uh, is in a relationship with a member of the opposite sex, or certainly with someone who's. Well, don't have to bring okay, that into well, it. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, it's such a I, I sad know. day in which we live, isn't I, it? It is. It's, it's horrible yeah. that we have to make those distinctions. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, don't don't try to get around God's word. Um, if you're not married and you are physically uh, involved or even mentally involved with lusting after other people, you're singing against God. Knock it off. Okay. Yes. This is from Paul, not the apostle, but some other oh. guy. I work with a proclaimed atheist. I've witnessed him several times. Well done. And he has admitted he's agnostic, so he's just like Richard Dawkins, yep. yeah. and even says he, quote unquote, adheres to Christian principles, stealing from our woodpile to build their house of straw. He is now engaged to a lady that I do not know as I know him. I asked him if she was a Christian, and he, and he said she is, and that she knows that he is a non-believer. My initial feeling is that she is a false convert, seeing that she is agreeing to marry a non-believer. How would you approach this not knowing the female fiance? I've worked on this guy regularly and have developed a good rapport with him, hence his wearing down of his defenses. Okay, I may, be, I may need correction here in my answer to this, but it would seem that this person is a, uh, a false convert. The, the female, female that yes. wants to marry. We can only go by what we're told. Yeah, uh, that wants to marry a professing atheist. So what you're actually dealing here with is two unsaved people. Right. And so you don't want to go for the symptom, you want to go for the cause. So I wouldn't say you're not to marry him. I'd, I'd witness to her. I'd give her. She, he, doesn't, he doesn't know her. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd, I'd ask to meet her or something, if possible, if he's bold enough to do that. Uh, and give her, or at least ask if you can mail her God's wonderful plan for your life. And if she can uh, come to a genuine faith... Uh, she'll break off the engagement and witness to our professing atheist, yeah. hopefully. Mark? Mark? Boy, you know, I, I like that idea. I wasn't even thinking about that. I think that's, no, that's really good. good. You know, send the book if possible. Hey, I got a gift for your uh, fiance. I think she might like it. Because you already have a little rapport there with your f atheist agnostic friend, uh, I think that he probably won't have any problem passing something on to uh, his fiance. And I would say, hey, um, you know, I have a gift for uh, your fiance since uh, she uh, she's a Christian. You know, so you see, I think she'd appreciate this. You mind passing it on for me? Uh, I think that's that's really good. I mean, I think anything else really would be so confrontational. You, it might go crazy inside the relationship. You're not going to say she's not a Christian. You know, I mean, how do you make those accusations? Where do you begin to go with that? So I think the best way is perhaps to give a gift. And what a I, I mean, I can't think of a greater gift than uh, that book or the two-in-one CD, you know, which deals with uh, true and false conversion. Yeah. You know, and maybe you might want to say, hey, Paul, why don't, uh, I don't know if, uh, well, Paul is the person who wrote us. I don't know the atheist name. But, Paul, I wonder if you can't invite him and his fiance, you know, out to dinner. I don't know if you have mm -hmm. a, a significant other or you're married. But uh, maybe, maybe just the three of you go out to dinner, go out to a movie or something, have a good time and get to meet this professing yes. Christian lady. and and see if there is an apropos time to share the gospel with uh, both of them over dinner. And with our tens and tens of viewers watching, perhaps you could pray for um, this atheist and his yeah. girlfriend. Okay. Now, some would expect me to scream during this next segment, right? Yeah. But I'm not going to. No. No. A gentle spirit has come upon you. That's right. And we plan to turn away. Rah, rah. I'm not going to. No. But, uh, so who sent this to me? I don't know. I think it was, uh, might have been Shane. Shane Martin. Remember, yeah, our, maybe. Yeah, we get a lot our of... Our social media guru. Yes, Yeah, could be. does a great job. But yeah. anyways, uh, we were sent a video called Soul Winning Evangelism Salvation Prayer. We're going to show you this one first, and then we're going to show you a short video 
uh, by uh, a young man who is teaching this particular evangelism method, and we're going to spend a little time talking about it. So here's the first video, only about a minute or so long. Take a look. Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay. Well, not saying it's going to happen right now, but when you do die, where do you think you're going to go? Heaven sweet. What about you? Heaven Heaven? Okay, we'll say you get to heaven, and God were to ask you why she let you in, what would you tell him? That's a hard question, because I'm not worshiping Satan. Okay. Because I love you. You're on my seat. Awesome. What about you? I've done a lot of stuff for you. You did a lot of stuff for me. Cool. All right. Well, in the Bible, in Romans 3, it says, all have sinned. Romans 6 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Romans 10 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe that Jesus died on the cross, that Jesus died on the cross for, me, for me and rose again. And rose again. I, give you my life. I give you my life. I want your plans. I want, your plans. I want Jesus Christ. To come into my life, and it's my heart. Amen. Amen. All right, so am I a little red? I feel red. Yeah, hot. Yeah, there's a little flush there. A little flush there. Okay, so what we basically just saw was the creation of three false converts, and so now we're going to take a look at a video by the uh, the man who is putting together this evangelism method, mm. and uh, I think our viewers will see as we have that he seems very sincere. Um, and at least he's out there trying to do something, but let's take a look at this one. Hey, this is Riley Stevenson. We're downtown Fort Worth here, and there's three things you need to know. First of all is that Romans 3 says all is sin. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The third thing is Romans 10 says everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Say this quick prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. He rose again. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to email me, Riley, at RileyStevenson.com. Go to our website. Go to our it's RileyStevenson.com slash what's next. We want to get some things in your hand. Sign up for my mailing list, and we'll stay in contact and follow up with you. God bless you. All right. So uh, the, the gentleman's name is Riley Stevenson. Never heard of him before until we were sent uh, this Ooh. video. Ooh. Uh, what are some of your thoughts, Ray, about what Well, I made seen? contact with him today uh, and asked him if I could send him a wonderful plan. He said, yeah, great. And he was very enthusiastic, gave me the address. And uh, so it's going in the mail to Dan. I'd love him to see it because he's learned that from uh, probably a lot of TV. A lot of TV just sends up, you know, they do a little teaching on something and say, oh, uh, all of sin, gift of God's eternal life, say this prayer after me. And the reason they do is it's a zeal without knowledge. They understand that there must be a knowledge of sin before this contrition to be repentance. Because without repentance, without repentance, there's no salvation, God-given repentance. So uh, it's a zeal without knowledge. And, and most people are totally ignorant to do this of the reality of uh, false conversion. They haven't got a clue there's such a thing as false conversion. They just see numbers in the church and, and the church is getting bigger and there's just no fruit. And there may be false converts themselves. So... That's very sad, and it epitomizes what's happened with modern evangelism. Now, what I saw in, in these two videos is there, uh, Mr. Stevenson and those who are doing this mm. evangelism method are actually taking the sinner's prayer to another level. Mm. And customarily, you, if you do a sinner's prayer with someone, you ask them, hey, would you like to pray to mm. ask Jesus into your heart? You know, maybe you get a yes, maybe you get a no, and then you lead them in a prayer. But they specifically train in this mef method. Don't ask them to pray. Just tell them. Repeat after me. Wow. So, Mark, what do you think about what you saw? Um, <laughs> boy, yeah, somebody in the chat room said, um, boy, I'd really like to have a commercial right about now. Uh, <laughs> usually you have people complaining that there's commercials during our feed. Um, but, you know, I've, I'm a little patient towards uh, people that are teaching this, uh, at least at first, at least until you can uh, talk to them and try to reason with them uh, through the scriptures and try to see what it is that they are seeing and why they're teaching what they're teaching. 
I'm reminded in uh, the book of Revelation when Jesus corrected people, he, you know, usually would start off with something positive and then he got to something uh, negative. I, I don't know too much about this guy or his ministry or anything along that lines, but I do give kudos to the fact that he's out there trying to evangelize. People aren't out there evangelizing and people don't want to do it. They think it's somebody else's responsibility. They're trying to get somebody else to do it. But here they are, they are out there doing it. And it takes a lot of boldness to walk up to somebody to hand them a pamphlet, whether it's about something you're trying to sell or in this case, about the gospel. Now, the gospel is entirely removed and the call to repentance is removed from this message. So they do need to get a firmer grasp on what scripture says and what it means to deny yourself. They need to have that call to repentance. Uh, they need to be able to be warned on what uh, the life to come is going to be like. So um, I think if they would be able to perhaps listen to Hell's Best Kept Secret, True and False Conversion, read through the book, God has a Wonderful Plan for Your Life, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they would now hit the streets with a better, firmer knowledge and understanding with the gospel. So I give them kudos for out there trying to do it, but yeah, they get a negative strike there for it just being really bad. I yeah. mean, it was just really terrible. You know, yeah. I, I can understand why people do this, because if you don't understand Lord of the Proud, Grace to the Humble, you're going to look at Jesus dealing with Nicodemus and others and say, look at that, just straight gave him gospel. <coughs> and and the gospel actually given in, is given in the sinner's prayer, if you listen carefully. There's no Christ crucified, there's no uh, trembling, they've offended God, there's no mention of judgment day, no mention of hell, and you just try and wrap it up in the end in the sinner's prayer, I think Jesus died for me and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does tremendous damage, it has done tremendous yeah. damage to the church, and even to the nation, because when the, the church loses its salty influence, then the nation uh, rots, and that's what's happened. Yeah. And, and I think what these videos show us is, is how much this idea of uh, Getting someone to pray a prayer really is a f form of works righteousness. The, the people are relying in the fact that they have yeah. prayed a prayer so for their salvation. They're not relying on Christ's sacrifice on the right. cross and his resurrection. You know, if you were to ask one of those young men uh, in the video, how did you come to faith in Christ? They're going to say, I prayed a prayer, mm. uh, which is not repentance and faith, and we don't see it anywhere in Scripture whatsoever. So I, I hope uh, Riley Stevenson, uh, one, reads the book, responds mm. to you, and... Uh, I, I hope the zeal that he now has will be uh, boosted with authentic knowledge knowledge and a real law and gospel presentation. Yeah, and if you can we'll find... We'll have a great evangelist out there if, if, Amen. if the Lord does that. If you can find uh, other ministries, uh, other videos like this in, in the, the Modern Gospels Preach, just shoot us the name and the address of people. We'll, we'll get my uh, trusty, faithful uh, Manuel to uh, contact them personally and we'll send them a free book. We're there just honored to do that. Yeah. yeah. On the box of livingwaters.com. So keep sending the videos. We won't necessarily play them all because we're not going to address the same subject every day. But as Ray said, we would love to get uh, good, solid evangelism teaching to those who are at least out there trying. So Absolutely. on the box of livingwaters.com. All right. Next question. When praying to God in regards to decision making, and what decisions to make, how would you know God is responding? Boy, sometimes you don't. This is kind of a good question. Um, it's been said you could get godly counsel, you pray, and you pray for wisdom, and then you make a, a decision based on the counsel you've received and the wisdom that you've received in faith. And then you see if you've blown it or not. <laughs> But yeah, uh, finding the mind of God is a very difficult thing to do. Well, in fact, the Word of God says, says the opposite. Who has known the mind of the Lord yeah. or offered him any counsel? Who has first given to God that God should yeah. repay him? None of us can perfectly know the mind or the will Unless of the Unless we have a written Lord. scripture. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. If, if God's Word says, you know, uh, do not commit adultery, well, there's, we there's know exactly what the will of God right. is. Absolutely. Don't commit adultery. But, um, but it does so seem that sometimes God just leaves it up to us to make a decision because, you know, when a, when a baby's first born, it starts crawling, and if it falls over, you pick it up and keep picking up, picking up. comes a time when you stand back and let the kid fall because he has to learn to walk himself, and it seems that God does that. I know when I was a, f a brand new Christian, I'd pray, and I'd get answers to prayer just like that, and as time went, it was like the heavens are silent. I've got to make a decision myself on this one, and it's part of growing up, and you get bruised, but you learn to walk in maturity. Yeah, and, and if you knew exactly what God's will is, was or is in any decision, it would take no faith right. to make those decisions.
decisions. Now, faith is only reliable, as reliable as the object of our faith, and that must be in Christ and Him alone. And He has given us the instruction manual for how we should live. But not every situation in life is given to us. The answers are given to us in yeah. the Word of God. It's yeah. not like that. Figure it out. Um, he has given us a new heart with new desires. He has uh, uh, regenerated our conscience, although there's still that war uh, every day with the flesh. And uh, sometimes when it comes to things that uh, God neither commands or condemns in Scripture, it's left to our conscience to make that decision. It's and, moral, yeah. yeah. Any man who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, according to James 4.17, to him it is sin. Some things aren't moral decisions. Now, if I lived in the Midwest and I saw a tornado hitting right for me, I'd say, Lord, I'd like to know left or right. <laughs> Wait, which just, way is it going to turn? Just an L or an R. <laughs> just, just give me a clue. <laughs> You know, I remember uh, talking to a pastor friend of mine who uh, sensed the call of God to go start a church over in uh, Bozeman, Montana. And I had said, hey, are you sure God is calling you out there? And he said, no, uh, I'm really not. But then again, man, uh, if I knew for sure, it wouldn't be faith, would it? You know, so there is that element of faith where we just simply trust God that he's going to lead us and direct us. I remember the first car I ever purchased. I was driving along inside the car saying, Lord, I, I guess this is the vehicle that I'm going to buy. I mean, it's, it's within my price range. It seems good enough. I, Lord, shut the door. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how you're going to intervene, but uh, uh, I guess this is the car. And I was at a dealership, right, going on a test drive. And as I began to pull in, the car started going, kick, 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 kick. And my wife, uh, she wasn't my wife at the time. We were just friends. Uh, along, she's gone along for the test ride. She's like, Mark, stop doing that because I'm a bit of a practical jokester. I don't know if you guys know that. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, a l wow. little bit. And she's like, Mark, stop doing that. Stop doing that. And I said, I'm not doing that. And I looked over at the dealer, uh, the, the salesman who was helping me. I said, what is that? And he said, that's a missed sale. That's what that is. <laughs> and that, that's how he responded, because I still planned on buying it. Oh, I just didn't, funny. I had no idea, and that's how God shut it down. But, you know, really, God has a way of intervening. It, as long as you go before the Lord and say, Lord, honestly, I don't care. I don't care if I get this job or that job, this car or that car. I don't care if I go down this road or that road. I only want to glorify you. What do you have for me? And then I think with that, you can just fall back on the fact that God will lead you. And it may seem to be a wrong decision, but that doesn't mean it is a wrong decision. It could be a learning experience and something that you need. So um, Colossians 3.15, I allow the peace of God to rule my heart. That word peace is where we get the English word umpire, actually. It feels safe to go this way, or it doesn't feel safe to go that way. Things don't make sense. You know, I, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'm not going to overthink it. I just submit it unto the Lord. I give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. God, what is your will? Give thanks. Okay, so I want to give thanks that you are going to accomplish what you want to accomplish with this decision. And now I'm going to move forward, and I trust that you're going to direct me. You're going to steer me where I need to go. And if not, hey, I trust that you'll be at the, uh, the underlining foundation at the bottom of it. And it, I have no problem just humbling myself and saying, hey, I messed up there. I blew it. So... Well, I picked up all those little puns about buying a car and asking God to steer you and asking him to <laughs> shut the door and there's four doors in a car. You know, when it comes to evangelism, uh, you really don't need to pray about it. You just do it because the command is there. Yeah. And we see the disciples it's doing that. The, the book of Acts, they were going to go to Asia. They hadn't received specific instructions. They were going on the Great Commission, and the Spirit forbade them to go on Asia. So they were going in faith, and the Holy Spirit said, no, not at this time. So you can fling yourself into evangelism knowing that it's God's will. Yeah. And you know what? Um, I think the, the, this last segment we wanted to do is probably going to take a little more time than usual. I know Mark will probably want to sink his teeth into it. So, Mark, why don't you see if there's a couple of questions or two maybe we can get out of the chat room. And while he's doing that, one more thing I want to bring up on this question. It's, mm. it's, this is a reason why it is so very important uh, to be uh, grounded in a solid biblical church, to have uh, people around you, godly leadership around you that you can trust to go and get godly counsel. A pastor Amen. with an open door, elders with open door, um, good uh, Christian friends whom you trust, who you can go to, uh, to help them, uh, help you uh, decide whether or not you should do this or that. It's good to have godly counsel, godly leadership around Absolutely. that purpose. So, so Mark, yes. do we have any questions? We do. You know, th there's a couple good ones in here. What if you get asked a question um, while you're opening or preaching and you don't have an answer for it? So it seems oh. like this person might be a novice. They don't know what to say oh. or... 
What, are you are ready to go. I'm ready. All right. What do you I'm do? I'm ready. I do what Mark Spence taught me. What? Say I don't know, and then go study the last question asked. Mm. What do you mean by that, Mark? That's it. Yeah, no, that, yeah that's exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do. There's nothing wrong with saying I don't know. You know, we we cannot be a people who think uh, to portray ourselves as people that have attained to all the knowledge of all the questions that can be asked in Christendom. Come on, let's get over ourselves. Christianity is not about you. You're not cool. There's no such thing as a cool Christian. You know, you can't impress people with Jesus when you're trying to impress them with yourself. It's okay to simply say, uh, I'm, I don't know. Any other questions out there that I might not be able to answer? <laughs> you know, uh, so um, say I don't know, but hey, you, you've challenged me, and I'm going to look into that. But you know what? Let me challenge you to look into that as well. Go to Google, type in your question, and see what answers you come up with. Ray, now I'm sure... Oh, it's There's always probably good. been a time when you've got a question you couldn't answer. Yeah, when you say I don't know it, people think, "Oh, he's yeah. human." That's and honest. Yeah, and honest. So it's a good test to me, say I don't know. I'd say it from now and every time I get asked a question. Yeah. <laughs> well, and look, uh, people out there are pretty sharp. They're pretty savvy. They know when you're winging it. Mm. They know when you're making something up. They know when you don't believe what's coming out of your mouth, and that is a really poor. Uh, testimony and a really poor example to set for other Christians. Uh, have humility, have integrity, and say, I don't know, and then go study. Hmm. Mark, we got about uh, 50 seconds. All right, how can I get my church motivated to spread the gospel or evangelize or at least pass out tracts? It's a great church, but it's sad that they simply don't share. Ray, you probably have one or seven. Yeah, the usual answer answers. is when you find out what that key is, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, also with, with that, I might add, uh, make sure that you're doing it and you spread uh, the stories of experiences that you have with leadership, with the senior pastor, and to uh, maybe even give them some tracks. Challenge them, hey, hand out a couple tracks this week, pastor. And if the pastor's doing it from the pulpit, it's going to encourage other people to do it as well. Yeah. Ask your pastor to go with you. There you go. And then when he shares air. from the pulpit, no, then I'm it'll kidding. allow the sheep will imitate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and persevere. Uh, don't quit. Uh, the last church we were members of for about a decade, it took seven years before one person came out with me to share the gospel. And what was the key? Perseverance. Oh, and, stay and, with it. And staying with it and mm -hmm. continuing to give people opportunity and let them know you're out there doing it. Well, we've been members now of our, our, our church now for uh, six months. Uh, where we call home, and I'm already blessed to have uh, one one man coming out with me on a regular basis, and another man's coming tonight uh, for the malt table, and I, I can be more excited. Wow, well, that's so, great. So get excited. Go out and share the gospel with people. Until uh, Monday, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel. Hey, it's about time for a new tagline, too, I think, at the end, right? Weren't we talking yes, about that? Yes, we're thinking of a new tagline. We're thinking about a new tagline. So on the box, livingwaters.com, give us your suggestions. The 10 worst... We'll receive a free pack of trillion dollar bills and uh, we'll think of something special for the one who, person who helps us pick the right one. So on the box of livingwaters.com. Go serve your king. Dino it's Dino. Dino. Oh! <laughs>